Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. God bless you. This is Pastor Carlos Rivera, and it is the last Walking in the Spirit for 2022. <laughs> Could you imagine? Wow, this year has gone by, and uh, wow, what a year. Uh, whenever we stop and get to this point in our lives at the end of the year, we kind of look back. Whew, a lot of stuff's happened in 2022. Uh, good stuff you know, challenging things, right? Uh, but we're here. We got through the year and we're going to enter this new year with new opportunities, uh, new challenges, uh, new opposition, new enemies, but still new victories. That's right, new victories, new territory to conquer, uh, new heights in our spiritual life to look forward to, and all that comes with a price, amen? And uh, as everybody's coming on board today and we reflect on this past year, I hope that, um, that walking in the Spirit has been an integral part of helping, helping you, helping me. I know, I know it helps me, <laughs> but also I hope it's been a blessing to you this year and that gathering every morning uh, has added value to your life. And that's always my goal and my desire as well. Amen. Praise God. So this morning we're going to get into God's Word as people are coming on and uh, I've, I've um, entitled our gathering this morning, Become Battle Ready. Become Battle Ready. Mm. Let's, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word minister to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Becoming Battle Ready. Drop this in the chat right now. A better me in 2023 or just make it shorter a better me in 23 a better me in 23 you know for us to grow and for us to become better it's not always easy a lot of times there's battles we have to fight there's struggles that we have to conquer even in our own lives but i believe that with the lord all things are possible right in psalms 56 11 god's word says this in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. Mm, that is so good. Because so often we face opposition. There are things around us that are coming against us. The concept, the, the, the philosophy of this world is so anti-Christ. See, we have to come to grips that our Christian values are under attack. That's right. The days of us being a Christian nation are being really challenged right now. See, God is quickly being eliminated from our society and abolished from any appropriate consideration. That's right. It, nowadays, in the eyes of the world, to, to love the Lord and have faith is, is to be outdated, to be irrelevant and closed-minded. You know, but, but, but we should expect this, right? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says this, For the message of the cross is foolishness, foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see, the world cannot understand why we follow uh, the Savior who was nailed to a cross. See, they, they see the, what Jesus went through. They see the suffering and the pain. And they think, well, why would you worship that God? Well, you know what? We don't worship that God. See, he paid the price for us uh, by going to the cross. But the God that I worship was put in a grave. Come on, somebody. And three days later, he resurrected and he was victorious. You see, I serve the God that, that overcame death, overcame the grave. And because he overcame this world, so can we. See, drop this in the chat right now. Accept opposition as proof of your progress. Accept opposition as proof of your progress. Progress. So you see, today's pop culture and mainstream media is painting such a distorted picture of what a Jesus follower resembles. I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's all kinds of comedies on, on television, and, and they're funny. But so often, they make the Christian uh, look a certain way. You know, I watched a show periodically called Community, and it's, a, it's about being in a community college, and it's actually pretty funny. 
but there's a Christian lady that's there and her values are always being overridden. Uh, she acts really goofy, right? And I believe, you know what? That's not what a Christian resembles. That's not what a Christian looks like. I believe that men and women of God are men and women of dignity, uh, uh, of, of, of grace and mercy, right? And I believe that, that when we walk, we resemble Christ, then it's something that the world will never really understand. See, they think that just because we stand on God's word, that we can't think for ourselves, that we use God's word as a crutch. Listen, I use God's words as my guideline. Drop that in the chat right now. Use God's words as your guides line, your guidelines. See, what they don't realize is that the truth found in the Bible is transformational and our source of freedom. That's right. They think that we're bound up with these rules and regulations. See, the, unfortunately, they don't understand that they're bound up by what they consider their freedoms because their freedoms have no guidelines and boundaries that keep them safe. They figure they can just do whatever they want, whatever they please, but that freedom is actually what gets them in trouble. The freedom we have is to know that the rules and guidelines that we run our lives by are rules that keep us safe. Uh, they keep us under the protection of God. They give us wisdom and understanding to make choices according to God's principles, which are always going to lead us to success. Amen. See, I know that because God's word has transformed my life personally. And I, I know many of us uh, can probably testify to that as well. See, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says this, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You know, when Paul writes this word to the Galatians, he's talking to Christians. He's talking to believers. We have to be very careful that, that the freedom that Christ has, has, uh, has, has won for us through the cross, that we be very careful that we don't get lackadaisical in our faith and slowly start going back to our old lives and then get trapped again under the slavery that he has set us free from. See, warfare, just remember this, warfare is always surrounded, always surrounds the birth of a miracle. That's right. There's always going to be opposition. There's always going to be challenges. And sometimes those challenges come to try to enslave us and entrap us. And of course, in many cases, try to resurrect the old person that we used to be. The Bible says that when a man is in Christ, he is a new creation. That's right. Drop that in the chat right now. I am a new creation. That's right. See, we're new creations because Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross, has given us newness of life. That's why the Bible says that we are born again. We have a, a spiritual birth. I mean, we were born physically uh, when our moms gave birth to us, but we were born spiritually when the Holy Spirit gave us a new life. So you see, I believe that if we walk in that freedom, we walk in that newness of life, that we're gonna experience such a better life, an abundant life. See, John 10.10 10 says that the devil comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundant. So you see, that's the life that I believe every one of us should be living is a, an abundant life, a good life the life that Jesus died on the cross so that we would not have to go through that penalty, but we would walk in newness of life. Amen. See, when you read the Bible, miracles are usually preceded by a struggle. That's right. They, they don't always come easy. That's why we have to be battle ready. That's why coming up this new year, listen, I'm not going to settle for what comes in my life. I want to make sure that I am walking in faith, and I'm hoping that you join me with that as well, that we walk in faith together. And you know what? Don't just settle for what life throws at us. Let's begin to speak God's word into existence. Begin to uh, talk faith. When we begin to talk faith, man, things around us begin to change. Our perspective begins to change as well. So this year, don't settle for anything less than God's best. Drop that in the chat right now. I'm not settling, settling for anything less than God's best. Begin to declare it over your family. Begin to proclaim it over your children. 
begin to speak life. So wherever you are, man, you're speaking life, you're being positive. People around you will know you because when you come around, all of a sudden, all those gray clouds lift in the room and all of a sudden there's a ray of sunshine. It's the light of Jesus Christ that shines inside of every one of us. See, but always know that it's not always going to be sunshine, that there are going to be great clouds, that there's going to be warfare, there's going to be challenges that we have to deal with because every time God is trying to birth something great, there's always a challenge. See, well, the lady with the issue of blood had to press through a crowd. That's right, she was already weak. Imagine that she was uh, hemorrhaging for over 12 years. And with the little strength that she had, she had to fight and struggle all the way to get through the crowd to finally get a hold of the garment of Christ. And when she did, because she proclaimed it before she got there, she said, if I could only just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. When she spoke that into existence and then she fought to get it, man, when she got there, that was, it was manifested. Her healing completely uh, took place. The, the Bible says that Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. Wow, what a powerful statement to know that the faith that we have in Christ, that, that even just that little mustard seed's worth of faith is enough to change us and change the world around us as well. See, that lady with the issue of blood understood what it was to, to fight to get her miracle. You know, the, the Hebrew boys had to pass through a fire. See, Daniel had to get put in a lion's den, you know. I've mentioned this before recently in one of my sermons, but all these struggles proceeded to a huge miracle on the other side, which transformed everybody around them as they observed what God did. I mean, that was supernatural. It was exceptional. You're going to be hearing that word a lot, especially New Year's Eve and, and throughout the year. I believe that God wants us to be exceptional. In other words, we're going to be an exception to the rules. Oh, I can't wait to preach <laughs> that sermon because I believe that's who we are. That's what God has made us to be exceptional, to be above some of the rules, some of the, the natural things that happen. That's what it means to be supernatural. It means to be above the natural. That's right, exceptional, an exception to the rule. And always remember, in the midst of the battle, the devil will always try harder when the miracle gets closer. Mm. Go ahead and drop that in the chat right now. The devil will always try harder when the miracle gets closer. So if you feel like the heat's being turned up right now, the challenges are getting more and more difficult, must mean that you're getting closer to your blessing. Man, as a matter of fact, proclaim that right now. Drop it in the chat. I'm closer to my blessing. That's right. I'm, I'm ready to receive my blessing. So when that happens, man, dig your heels in. Just drop, just put your head down and begin to push, to persevere, to not quit. Just keep pushing because you're so close to your victory and the enemy knows it, but the enemy cannot prevent it. Amen? Because that struggle and that pushing is making you stronger. That resistance in your life, that, with that opposition is actually making you stronger. So when you get to that place of miracle, not only will you be able to get there, but you'll be able to stay there. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'll drop that in the chat, man. We're rolling right now. Uh, when you get to the place of your miracle, not only will you be able to get there, you'll be able to stay there. That's right. You'll be able to maintain and sustain what God has given you. That territory that God has given you right now, you're going you're gonna to embrace it. You're going to possess it. And then you'll be able to sustain it and keep it. Amen. And then continue to move forward and believe God for even greater and mightier things. See, the devil's always going to try harder, but he is no match. The moment you understand that you're a child of God, that the Holy Spirit's inside of you, and you have the power and the authority in the spirit realm, man, that's, that's the kind of Christian the devil doesn't know what to do with. Come on, somebody. And that's what I want you and I to become this year in 2023. To be a better me in 23 is to understand who we are in Christ. Amen. And walk in that authority and that confidence. Amen. And know that the enemy is no match. He is not an equal foe 
He's a defeated foe, right? See, we pray, we pray from a, we don't pray for victory. Drop this in the chat right now and make it personal. I don't pray for victory. I pray from victory. Oh, come on. That's a whole different outlook. We're not, we're not begging for God to do things that he's already promised. If he's already given it to us, that we already had the victory, so we pray from a victorious point of view, amen, letting the enemy know that he is no match for us when we're walking in God's anointing and in God's power. Ephesians 6.12 really clarifies all of this. It really does. It says, for our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil, in heavenly realms see we need to understand that the spiritual battle is real but many christians only believe what they can see we need to know that the battle is in an unseen dimension that it's happening all around us all the time and when you understand that it's going to make you more sensitive to the influences of this world that's right that the, all the uh the, the all this all these dark forces that are around us that are trying to come against our spiritual lives and our, our Christian values. That's the battle that we're in. And we have to be battle ready this year to stand up in prayer because we don't fight with, 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 with carnal weapons. The Bible says well, we don't fight with weapons that are carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that, that weapon we're talking about is fasting and praying and believing God to build our faith so we could, we could walk stronger and walk in victory. See, many Christians believe only what they can see. See, many have been conditioned to believe that they are battling philosophical concepts and moral differences. At the end of the day, those are just the surface things. Those are just the results and the fruit of what we're seeing uh, the, that the influence of this world is having upon society and even upon Christians. We gotta be so careful because God has given us the answer, amen. His word gives us the answer. Not only lets us know that we are in a battle, but he's given us the victory. And it's found right there in the same scripture I just mentioned earlier. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But it says, that, it says this, therefore, in Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor, right, of God's righteousness. The belt of truth, it talks about the breastplate, which is the body armor of God's righteousness. Of course, for the shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news. I love this. For the shoes, put on the peace that comes with God's good news so you'll be fully prepared. And listen to this. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, my goodness. God has given us exactly what we need to overcome, what we need to become victorious. Put on the full armor of God. Be battle ready this year. Look at this. <clears throat> excuse me, read this last scripture, and when you read it, you find out we have the victory. We have it when we stand firm, when we, in the truth, in God's word, when we have the righteousness of God in our lives, when we're in right standing with God, when, the, when we walk in his peace and in the good news that, that Jesus Christ is, is our Savior and our Lord, and we're able to proclaim that to others as well. Then it says we're fully prepared when we have a shield of faith. Come on, that faith that God builds in us, that faith that strengthens us. When the enemy starts throwing arrows at us, we, the shield of faith, it's like it just hits the faith and bounces off. Come on. It just, the shield of faith deflects every attack of the enemy and it has no penetrating power because it hits our faith. Come on, somebody, which is a shield of about us just like the lord the word of god says the lord is a shield about us he's the glory 
and the lifter of our heads, amen, and then put on the helmet of salvation, to know that you're saved, that your mind is being covered by that helmet, that you don't allow all these thoughts, amen, that we can tear down every cast down every imagination, every thought that exalts itself against God. See, when you begin to understand who you are and you walk in the, in the power of your salvation, there's no enemy in hell that can attack your mind. Amen. So I'm, that's what I'm believing and I'm praying for the rest of this year. So I hope and pray that you are blessed by our gathering this morning. I know I was, and I'm, and I'm believing God for great and mighty things, and I'm fasting and praying for you as well. So, so every day is, and, and throughout the, the weeks that, that come forward, and even the 21 days of fasting, listen, let's pray that God will strengthen us as individuals, but also strengthen our church, our church leaders, right? And of course, the men and women of God, not just in our city, but in our state, uh, in our nation, and all over the world. Amen. And just believe that this year, 2023, is going to be a year of victory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, well, listen, if you have your prayer list with you, go ahead and pull that out. We're going to pray and, and, and believe God for awesome and mighty things today. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for you today. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And today, in Jesus' holy name, we just surrender to you, Father God. This next year belongs to you, so we just turn it over to you right now and pray you will lead us and guide us, that you'll strengthen us, Father God, that you'll be with us. We know you'll never leave us or forsake us, so we know that you're already going ahead of us. And even as we pray and fast, Lord God, beginning of this year, we know there are battles we will not see. There are potholes we will not hit because you're going to lead us and guide us and we're going to cancel every work of the devil in advance and believe for great and great and mighty things. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you that you are the number one factor in our lives. You are our priority, God. We love you and we worship you and we thank you for what you're doing this coming year in our lives, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, thank you for meeting every need. Thank you that every need will be met, that there'll be no lack, but there'll be overflow to meet others' needs as well. And Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us of our sin, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father God. Deliver us from any struggles that we go through, Lord God. And just help us, Lord Father, to be the best that we can be. Because we want to be a better me in 23. So Lord, help us to be exactly that. And Father, we praise you and thank you for forgiving us. And help us to always forgive others. To not hold on to any resentment or bitterness or, uh, or any grudges against people, Lord God. But to be free and just act uh, in forgiveness knowing that that forgiveness handles every issue, Lord God. And Lord, we know people are going to fall short around us because we do it. So help us to give others um, uh, the, the benefit of the doubt at times and also give them the, uh, the benefit that, that they are weak just like we are, that we're humans and we're going to fall short, that we can forgive, forget, and move forward. And Lord, I thank you for the power that you give us to do that. And Lord... I, I pray you will continue to encamp your angels around us. Even this new year, God, protect us, surround us, and just protect us from anything that the enemy will be throwing at us. And we just thank you in advance for the victory in Jesus' name. And Lord, help us to stay battle ready this year, to know that we're in a battle. We have nothing to, nothing to worry about. We've already had the victory, so we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory, Lord God. We have an enemy that may come against us. We have people that may come against us. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we are ready for battle as you call us in, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And Father God, we, we pray for those that need salvation today, that today you'll draw them by the cross, that they can start their new year, my God, with a new revelation of who you are, that they may know you and that you may know them in a greater way way as well as they surrender their wills and come to a place of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So God and Lord, I pray for divine healing upon those that need healing in their hearts and in their minds 
in their souls, Lord God, that their emotions will be healed, Lord God, that there'll be a supernatural, divine outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon those that have emotional issues, Father God, that they can get off medications, that they can get off all the things that they're doing, that they can walk in your peace, oh God, in Jesus' name. And I pray for those that need deliverance, that need freedom from, from bad habits, from addictions, uh, from strongholds, from, from generational curses. In Jesus' name, we curse those curses at their root right now. We command them to release their hold in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the victory and the freedom that people were going to experience this year, this new year, Father God, to walk in total freedom, to serve you, to worship you, and to be the best that they can be as well. So Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you even now for healing relationships, for healing marriages right now, Father, supernaturally. I just praise you and I thank you that even now, my God, even now, Lord God, that there's reconciliation happening right now, Father God, in relationships and marriages as friendships, uh, siblings as well, Father God, and, and even co-workers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you and I praise you for total healing in relationships, my God. And Father, we pray for miracles. We pray that, that this year, Lord God, that signs and miracles will start confirming your word, that we'll begin to see the manifestation of the supernatural in our lives and in the lives of those around us, that in our church, Lord God, that miracles as we gather together on Sundays and we begin to worship you, that you'll pour out your spirit in such a way that divine miracles will begin to happen, that the lame will walk, that the blind will see, that the deaf will hear. Father, in Jesus' name, we just praise you and thank you, Father God, for the supernatural anointing and the revival that is coming, oh God, even to our nation this year, even to our churches, even to new life. Right here in Richmond, I pray for a divine outpouring of your spirit, Lord God, that will just begin to shake our hearts and minds, and that you'll just pour out your spirit, Lord God, and we'll see divine miracles. I pray for divine opportunities, for supernatural doors to begin to open, Lord God, doors that we, we've wanted to walk through for years, and now they're going to open, Father God, not because we're pushing it, but Father God, that you're opening them. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor. This day we receive those opportunities. We receive your divine favor in our lives that wherever we go, Lord God, that your favor will be there, Father God, in Jesus' name. Continue to expand our vision for your kingdom that even this coming year, Lord God, we'll see bigger things, we'll see greater things, oh God, that you just open up our understanding to see that there are more with us than there are against us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you're giving us the land that we're crossing over to the other side this year to receive the abundance and the mercy and the grace and uh, and all that you have for us, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for divine overflow and increase like never before in every area of our lives, Lord God, in our personal lives, in our business, professional lives, in our financial lives, Lord God, in our children, in our families, oh God, that there'll be an overflow of blessing and abundance in every area of our lives, Lord God. And Father, we just receive it now. We thank you for it in advance, Father God. And we just praise you for the victory this morning. And we're always going to make sure, my God, that you get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, put in 777 in the chat. Put the claps in there. My gosh, what a powerful, powerful gathering this morning. What a great way to end the year. Amen. Listen, I am so grateful for you. You guys are amazing. I see your names popping up whenever we gather. I see you at church. And I just want you to know that I am so encouraged by having you participate uh, here with Walking in the Spirit this whole year. You know, I'm praying that God will also draw more people to gather with us as well. Amen. 
just to start the day off in God's presence and see God's favor like never before. Amen. And you know, I close every gathering with a scripture. What a great scripture to end the year. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4. Deuteronomy 20, verse 4 says this, The Lord my God goes with me to fight for me against my enemies. He gives me victory. Mm, come on, somebody. That's it. We don't fight alone. God is fighting for us. Come on, he's fighting. He's going ahead of us. Sometimes he'll even fight fights that we'll never have to entangle ourselves in because he'll go before us and just clear the path in the name of Jesus. And that's what I believe in this year for a clear path to God's victory, to, be, to advance his kingdom and to advance our lives as well. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much. Let me pray God's blessing over you right now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord God. I thank you for another year of victory, another year, Father God, of persistence and just continuing to hang in there, Father God, and not just walking, Lord God, and surviving, but thriving <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And Father, bless them, Lord God, and keep them. Shine your face upon them. Be gracious to them, Lord God. Lift up your countenance towards them and give them peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, listen, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Just go out and listen. I pray that to, uh, tomorrow night, right, Saturday night, 9 p.m., get to the church on time. Enjoy the whole service. I guarantee you, it's only once a year. We start at 9 p.m. We start with worship. And man, we're just going to end the year strong. We're going to believe God to move in a great and mighty way and invite folks to come out. I guarantee you, uh, we've had folks that their very first visit was to our New Year's Eve gathering. And man, they loved it and they stayed. I'm telling you, they need to see how God's people celebrate, how we can enjoy ourselves and have a great time together and enjoy God's presence. And what a great way to start the new year. Amen. So praise God. So anyway, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And always remember that when you're walking in the flesh, you will not fulfill the desire. I'm sorry. Well, time out. Well, when you're walking in the spirit, come on, somebody, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Oh, praise God. God bless every single one of you. Because remember, when you're walking in the spirit, it's the very best that you can be. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Lord willing, I'll see you next year. That's right. Next year, Monday, we'll gather again together, start off a fresh new year. And I want to encourage you. I do this every year. I'm finishing up. I actually timed it so that December 31st, I'll finish my one year of my Bible reading. But January the 1st, I hit the reset button and I go on my phone and I do my 365-day Bible on my phone with uh, my Bible app. So I want to encourage every one of you to do that. It's so simple. I listen to it when I'm in the shower and it just makes my day. My hearing God's word, hearing God speaking to me first thing in the morning is always awesome. So anyway, God bless you. Have a marvelous day. Lord willing, I'll see you again next year <laughs> on Monday. Lord willing, right here, I'm walking in the spirit. My name is Pastor Carlos Rivera. God bless you.